One day this summer, I set out to try something I had thought about from time to time for 45 years. As a young boy, I remember seeing something in a Boy Scout manual or Boy's Life magazine. I don't recall exactly, but it talked about collecting water through evaporation and condensation. It was just a couple of paragraphs with a couple of sketches, but it fell under the intriguing title of Wilderness Survival, so naturally it had my full attention. The directions were simple, and the required supplies, well, let's just say they were within my budget. A bowl, a shovel, a large plastic trash bag. The basic concept was to capture evaporated moisture from whatever green vegetation was available and collect it into the bowl. The instructions were to dig a shallow hole in the ground about a foot deep and three feet in diameter, fill the hole halfway up with available vegetation, and place a bowl in the center of the hole. Take a large plastic trash bag and cut it along one side and the bottom to create a single sheet. Lay this plastic sheet across the top of the hole and use the dirt from the hole to anchor the sheet around the perimeter. Find a small stone about the size of a golf ball and place it in the center of the plastic sheet directly above the bowl to form a slight funnel shape in the plastic sheet. And that was pretty much it. The magic was supposed to happen as the sun heated the contents of the hole. The heat would cause any moisture in the plants to evaporate. Having nowhere to go, the moisture level in the hole would get so high that the condensation would begin to collect on the plastic sheet. As the condensation increased, it could eventually beat up and run down the bottom of the plastic sheet towards the stone. Eventually, the water would form droplets below the stone and would fall into the cup. It sounded genius, creating drinking water in the wilderness to survive. I felt a bit safer knowing that I had knowledge that many others didn't. The Navy SEALs had nothing on me, but for whatever reasons, the years passed and I never tried that water harvesting idea. Like I said, I thought about it every so often, but never tried, until now. I must admit my newfound motivation came by way of a giant pot my wife bought. Walking by it in the garage for like the 20th time randomly triggered my thought, Hey, I can try that water collection idea with that pot, and I wouldn't even have to dig a hole. It was a hot, sunny day, and I thought, guy, it's now or never. The prickly pear cactus that scatter my property were swollen with water from recent rains. I decided to try those. I gathered about 10 pads from three or four plants. They have a solid outer skin designed to retain the moisture within. I figured chopping and breaking them up into pieces would allow more moisture to escape. I have to think this would apply to almost any green vegetation used for this purpose. After placing the chopped cactus pads inside the pot, I set a small glass bowl in the center. Conveniently, this particular pot had an elevated area in the bottom center that I could use as a stand. I had a roll of plastic sheeting amongst my painting supplies. I cut off enough to cover the top of the pot and hang down the sides about a foot. I used some masking tape to hold the sheeting in place, then decided to also tie a rope around the top of the pot to further secure it. It was 11 a.m. The day was hot and sunny. The high was expected to be around 100 degrees, and for the desert, the air was relatively humid, given that it was monsoon season and there was a slight chance of thunderstorms that afternoon. Within an hour, I started to see tiny water beads collecting on the plastic. After three hours, the beads were much larger. By late afternoon, when the sun was low in the sky, I noticed one or two drip lines running down the plastic, but it didn't appear to be enough to be adding any significant water into the bowl. As the sun was about to set, I decided to leave the setup alone for the night. My thought was maybe the cooler air at night and the temperature difference of the warmer air inside the pot would trigger more condensation. I just wasn't sure if that condensation would happen on the inside of the plastic or the outside. As a side note, it's rare to find dew on anything most mornings in the desert. The exception occurs usually in a morning after it's rained. Ultimately, I left the pot alone for 24 hours. Before taking off the plastic, I gave the side of the pot several taps to release any excess water from the surface. I figured I might as well capture as much water as possible. I really had no idea how much water, if any, had collected. I also wondered how much water fell outside the bowl. After all, the bowl I used was fairly small. When I finally saw the bowl, I sort of had a mixed reaction. Part of me thought, wow, it actually worked and there's water in there. And part of me said, there's water, but not much and certainly not enough to survive on. 
After 24 hours, it looked like I had captured less than half a cup of water. The experiment was a success, but several questions came to mind, which I'll get to in a minute. One thing I noticed was how warm the bowl and water were. Like the inside of a car in the summer, everything in the pot was very warm and wet. In hindsight, I wish I had included a thermometer in the experiment. Also, it, there was a pronounced organic, earthy, vegetation-like odor from the pot, sort of like early stages of decomposition. That was not surprising given the heat and closed environment. Also, there was a decent amount of dirt stuck to the cactus pads when I shoveled them in. The bottom of the pot had a small amount of pooled water. I wasn't sure if that water had dripped off the plastic and missed the bowl, or if it leaked from the cactus pads. Could be a little of both. More questions. I took the warm bowl of water inside. I let it sit for an hour to cool off. When I smelled it, it still had some of that vegetation earthy odor as it did in the pot. I took a few sips and didn't taste anything unusual. It just tasted like distilled water, but like I said, I could smell some of the organic odor. I continued to take sips like I was in Napa Valley wine tasting. In the end, it seemed like drinkable water with just a hint of earth and cactus. It wasn't bad, just different. Heck, somebody could probably bottle it and market it to Whole Foods as the next great health drink. So after the experiment, here are some questions I have. Feel free to comment. I'd love to hear what people have to say. One, what plants work best? I would assume greener, leafier plants work best. Two, are there any dangers in using certain plants? Can toxics be transferred to the water? Three, would clear plastic work better? I used opaque plastic sheeting. What difference would I see using clear or say even black plastic? Four, what natural additives are available? What can I add to distilled water to make it drinking water? Five, what designs work best? I've seen a few designs that look like this. I'm curious how well they compare to what I did. Six, how efficient and beneficial is this method? Being that the cactus is edible, would I get just as much water or perhaps more water from simply smashing the cactus pads and collecting the water than filtering it? This experiment had me looking at other options for harvesting water from plants and air. I found another YouTuber named Mr. Yazdin. I'll put a link to his video below. He had some interesting ideas. I also came across a company called Source. They market a self-contained solar-powered water from air harvesting machine called a hydro panel. The idea sounds intriguing, but the technology is new and their prices are extremely high. They claim to be able to pull two to five liters out of the air per machine per day. I haven't done a patent search on them, but I have to believe that unless they do have patents, if their product really does work, there will be similar, cheaper products available soon. Knockoffs, if you will. Once again, let me know your thoughts and experiences. Because I live in the desert and I don't know what the future holds in terms of having reliable drinking water, I plan to continue to pursue this topic. As I learn more, I'll be sure to put out another video and share the knowledge. I try to create videos that cover topics or show specifics about things that I couldn't find elsewhere. Sometimes it's just a small hint that can really help someone. If you found this video useful or interesting, please subscribe. Thank you.